Today I make no demands, no threats, but one day I shall voice demands, and wall shall obey them. Listen to the ruler of Lotveria, the glorious Doctor Doom, as your geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Doom Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or evil villain from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And we're doing that this week. But this week, we're doing a very special episode. That's right. Because? Well, it is our 250th episode. Ooh. We're halfway to 500. Yeah. Um, wow, this is a pretty crazy. Again, we were the fifth year of this podcast, 250 episodes. That is a thing. I mean, we're ancient in podcast years. In podcast years, we are. <laughs> but we always like to do on the 50th episodes characters that are favorites of ours. Beginning with our 50th episode where Jason taught us about Lois Lane. Lane. And then I don't remember what the 150 episode was. Aha. I I believe it was Jason Todd as, or was that 200? I have no idea. We're nailing it. One yes. of them was West Coast Avengers. I think that was 100. It, we don't ha- we don't have to name all. Doesn't follower. matter. This is ridiculous. We do fun ones. Let's just move on. <laughs> Let's move on. This is not the pod- This is not the episode of history of what you, episodes have we lesson. done. This is an episode about. Doctor Doom, the villain of the Marvel Universe, the villain of Fantastic Four. Ashley, why did we pick him for our 250th episode? There's nothing tying in Doctor Doom. We we think the Fantastic Four are coming in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but mm-hmm. we have no guarantees. No. Uh, we picked Doctor Doom because he is our single most requested <laughs> lesson in the history of Geek History lesson. That is true. And um, he's a character who Jason is very passionate about. Uh, we've talked about a lot. A we lot have, of times we talked about doing a Doctor Doom episode. And we did an extensive Fantastic Four uh, series of episodes, and so now we're here to flip to the other side. Doom is here. That's right. This is my Doom voice. It's very good. He's very metallic, but yes. he's also not American. No. True. Very true. I am Romani. Yes. He is. That's true. Uh, this episode was suggested <laughs> by Owen Hobbs, Lee Jones 1223, Epic Face Master, Alexander Ebert, Dominic Tan, Roger Murphy, Christopher McKee, L Bird Zero, Nick Joseph, Bob Flores, Roman Salas, Benjamin Kesselman, Jason Jatsack, Daryl Jason Hurd, Victor Rabella, Matthew Corum, Johnny Lee, Matt Mitchell, <laughs> at GU Doug, at KC Batman 034, <laughs> at Kiefer underscore XL, and at Super Gerbil. And I'm sure there are more people we didn't put on this list. I'm sure people ask us in real life. Those are the ones we could find. Those are the ones that we recorded. So let's move into the 10 cent origin of Doctor Doom. This Which, is the 250th time we've done this. It's true. Uh, we'll see if we can describe it accurately. This is the first part of the podcast where Professor Jason is going to teach you all of the creators, power sets, and important things you're going to need to know in case you go to a formerly Fox-themed party and someone says, Hey, what's up with the Fantastic Four? Yes. Now, of course, the funnest thing about this is that, you know, the, I'm surprised you didn't go to the cocktail party that is in Latveria. Oh, well, next time. Take so, two. Uh, so the publisher is Marvel Comics. The first appearance is the Fantastic Four number five in July of 1962, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Now, his alter ego, his full actual name is is Victor Von Doom. His team affiliations, of course, are the Sorcerer Supreme, the Cabal, the Intelligentsia, the Future Foundation, the Astonishing Avengers, the Avengers, the Lethal Legion. His noble aliases are Rabum Ali and the infamous Iron Man, and his abilities are he has a genius-level intellect, technopathy, he has energy absorption and projection mind transference with demonic submarine and dark mysticism and sorcery, he has armor that grants him superhuman strength, gauntlet lasers, force blasts, flight, and force field generation, and also he can build various high-tech weapons and gadgets. Huh. 
Yeah, it's a lot of stuff there. It, and almost none of it makes sense together. Oh, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, uh, be, be warned as well. This is uh, Dr. Doom. This is one of my favorite characters. We probably will go longer than a normal episode of Geek History Lesson. So buckle up, my friend. Two in a row where we're going a bit longer. We'll see. Uh, but before we talk about comics, we have to talk about my book about comics and superheroes that served in the military. I wrote a book called Super Soldiers, A Salute to the Comic Book Heroes and Villains Who Fought for Their Country. Uh, you know who else wrote this book? Dan Jurgens, the writer slash artist of Superman and Captain America and creator of Booster Gold. And this is what he had to say about it. Jason Inman's in-depth examination of this fascinating topic is a remarkable study of our country's heroes, both real and imagined, and their compelling links through the ever-changing course of our nation's military history. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Jesus, you guys plug a lot of stuff on this show. Yeah, because we're proud of this stuff and we're happy about this stuff. And we have to make sure that you know about this stuff because my book is on Amazon right now, Barnes & Noble, and a bunch of different places. And pre-orders are how we dominate the charts on Amazon. Some other military characters I examine in this book are Nick Fury, Captain America, Captain Marvel. I interject some stuff from my military career. Uh, but Ashley, you've read my book. You I were was my, the first person to read it. You're my first beta reader. Uh, what did you think? I think the book is really awesome and I am not just saying that because I know you and I am sitting across the table from you right now as we speak. I think this is very special. I think it's very unique to you. Mm -hmm. And I think if our Geek History Lesson readers have enjoyed any of our military characters or the Jason Inman episode, they're going to get more unique things from Super Soldiers. Yes. So I want to write more books. And thank you for that, Ashley. You're welcome. So please go pre order Super Soldiers right now. Uh, if you ever like Geek History Wrestling, you're going to love this book. And you need to know, like, we're going to keep plugging this book because we're both writers. And we have been to many cons. We were at WonderCon where people have come up to us and they're like, you wrote a comic? When did that happen? So I'm going to keep shouting out about my book because I'm proud of it. I think it's great. And I want as many of you to read it. Many of you, my university students, I'm assigning it to you as homework. Definitely recommended reading. <laughs> Super Soldiers hit stores June 15th. And please pre-order it on Amazon today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we're going to move into History 101. The main meat of, we're not doing meat cutes. Oh, I forgot. We're going. Yes, we should do meet cutes. My bad. That's okay. Uh, my apologies, Ashley. Uh, let's go to the meet cute of Doctor Doom. Dr. Ashley, Doom. how did you meet Doctor Doom? I don't know. I actually deleted this out. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, formatting is tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know because I knew about the Fantastic Four from, and I think we've talked about this in the past, the Burger King action figures. What? Oh, that yeah. That they made in the 90s. I forgot about that. Yeah, I had an invisible woman who, if you put her in warm water, went invisible. And my, they're really crummy. Mine got stuck, so she was kind of half phasing, which is cool now, but was not cool when I was a tiny child. And I know we had the Doctor Doom action figure, so I assume that's where I first met Doctor Doom. Uh, that's really cool. What did, Do you remember what any of the other figures did? Um, Reed had arms that if you pushed in his back, I think they extended. I honestly don't think Ben did anything. I think he was just huge. Um, and maybe Johnny glowed in the dark? Because there's no way he lit up because none of those cheap Happy Meal type toys light up. I wish remember. I wish he lit on fire. I wish that was like the Happy Meal toy that like just lit. <laughs> like, he like was a, a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> He's a straight up cigarette lighter. <laughs> um, someday I'll, I'll buy that Sea Storm action figure off eBay for three dollars. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that's where I first met Doctor Doom. Um, but I mean, not with like any of the dynamic, interesting things that you're going to tell us about him. I mm -hmm. thought he was a robot for a really long time. Oh, because well, he, he looks a, like a robot. Sometimes he is a robot. Uh, that's also true. Mm -hmm. Jason, tell me about Wizard Magazine. Uh, no. Ooh, breaking the mold. I'm not going to tell you about Wizard Magazine. Uh, not everything I do is related to Wizard Magazine, actually. Um, the, well, then tell me where you first met Victor Von Doom. I met Victor Von Doom in a Marvel event called Heroes Reborn. Now, Heroes Reborn, of course, is the event where Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld were licensed the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the Hulk, Iron Man, and... Thor, it was Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, and Fantastic Four. Those mm -hmm. were the four titles, and they got to take them over for 12 issues. And before that, I didn't really read the Fantastic Four or the Avengers because I thought they were silly, but I thought the artwork was so good. I did see a preview in Wizard Magazine. And in Fantastic Four number three, volume two, drawn by Jim Lee, written by Jim Lee, and Brandon Choi, I believe, you're introduced to Doctor Doom, and it was my first introduction to the character. Now he's also in issue four. There's an all the covers for the Heroes Reborn 
series are amazing and I believe the cover to four is like it's Doom extending his hand towards the reader and the Fantastic Four are in between his fingers. Okay. I will look for that shirt on our socials. It's very cool. I believe it's the it's the cover to Fantastic Four Volume Two number four. Great. Or five. It's one of those two. But you'll recognize it's it's an amazing Jim Lee drawing of Fantastic Four is so good. And that was my introduction to Doom because Doom later shows up and in, he's involved in almost every issue of the series. And then also in Heroes Reborn, he becomes the enemy of the end of the Iron Man run. He shows up there, too. And he was so I was so enraptured by this guy because when they introduced him Heroes Reborn, he was more mysterious. They didn't drop the thing of like, oh, we went to college together until late, late into the run. And having had no previous experience with mm-hmm. the team, that was a bombshell for you. Exactly. So he was just sort of this like weird king who really hated them and dressed <laughs> like Iron Man. And I was like, who is this guy? That's so funny because you could also vaguely use it as a description for Magneto for mm-hmm. a little while when he's off in like Genosha and Wundaga and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not like, in, it's not until like issue four uh so he's introduced in three of that series, and that's until issue four they revealed the origin. But it's not like till like way into the origin mm-hmm. or way into the issue, excuse me. So that was my first introduction to uh, Doctor Doom. Very interesting. All right, so now let's move into the history one hundred and one. Yes, which is the main meat of the lesson that Professor Jason is thrilled by, where he's going to teach us everything we need to know about Doctor Doom. The Fantastic Four. Little do they dream they are not but pawns in the hands of Doctor Doom. This is the first thing that Doctor Doom ever says in comic books. Ever? Ever. Wow. So, but before we go into his comic books, we have to jump into the publication history first. Yes, let's. Doom was conceived by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, of course. With the Fantastic Four title performing very well, Lee and Kirby were trying to dream up a soul-stirring, super sensational new villain, as they called it. Uh Uh-huh. Looking for a name, Stan Lee latched onto Doctor Doom, which he thought was just very simple. And due to the rush to publish the issue that he was going to debut in, they were not able to give the character a full origin story until Fantastic Four Annual Number 2, two years after his debut. He gets like a little tiny origin. We'll talk about that briefly. Which is funny because it's sort of in the tradition of uh, a Dr. Moriarty type foe in Sherlock where we never hear about him Mm -hmm. until the story he shows up in. Yes. Now, Jack Kirby modeled Doom after Death, the Grim Reaper, with his armor standing in for the character Skeleton. Mm. And now we're going to go to the fictional history. Let's. Now, Victor was the child of Romani travelers in Latveria, which is a fictional small European country. Victor's mother, Cynthia was killed soon after she called upon the demon Mephisto for power. Ashley, do you know who Mephisto is? One of the Marvel Comics universe devils. He's basically the devil in Marvel Comics, mm-hmm. so they don't have to call anybody Satan. Yeah. So, But he's basically the devil. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, there are others. He's kind of the main one. He's the one that took away Spider-Man's marriage. That's right. Yes. Screw you, Mephisto. I liked married Peter Parker. Now, Victor's mother, Cynthia, left Victor with his father, asking him to protect him from Mephisto. And Victor's father, Werner, was a doctor who was called upon King Vladimir of Latveria to treat his wife. Despite his father's attempts to care for King Vladimir's wife, the noblewoman died and Werner von Doom fled with young Victor Von Doom on a cold winter's night trying to avoid being murdered by this king. Victor survived the cold, but unfortunately his father did not. And when Victor woke up in the morning, they were in this, uh, they were actually out, out, outside, they weren't in a place. Victor's father's body had frozen dead around him. Ugh. And Victor, as a child, was unable to break free. Oh, that's awful. Yes. So Victor was eventually left with his father's best friend, Boris. And Victor later discovered his mother's mystical books and artifacts, and with them he was able to teach himself sorcery. He made several unsuccessful attempts to free his mother's soul from Mephisto. But also, mysticism was not the only way that Victor was trying to free his mother. He was also trying to use science, and he quickly excelled in science. And the one thing you learn about Victor Von Doom is if he puts his mind to it, he excels at it, no matter what it is. It's interesting. He's a real crux of some big early themes in Marvel, the magic and science and how they mm-hmm. intertwine. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna, we're going to talk about a lot of the magic and science and magic and science and stuff like that. We're cool. gonna, uh, this is very important to Doom, because Doom comes off as a science character, but he's actually steeped in mysticism. Can't wait. So... Victor developed several inventions and eventually 
got the eye of and gained a scholarship to Empire State University in New York. While attending the school, Victor met Reed Richards, mm-hmm. who would later become his enemy, Mr. Fantastic, and Benjamin J. Grimm, who would later become the thing. In school, Reed and Doom were considered to be equals and scholarly rivals. Ooh. And it was understood in many circles that it was uncertain of who was the smarter one. Mm-hmm. That will come into play later. Okay. One day, Victor designed an invention to rescue his mother, which would become his greatest downfall. Richards attempted to warn Victor of the error in his calculations with the machine. However, Von Doom's arrogance refused to let him listen to Reed, who he saw as his, you know, lesser. Mm -hmm. And the machine then exploded, scarring his face and led to his expulsion from Empire University. Disgraced and bitter, Doom traveled the world. Eventually, he came upon a small Tibetan village of monks who assisted him in creating a futuristic suit of armor. Eagle, excuse me, eager, not eagle, to wear the suit. (laughs) Doom placed the still hot steel, still hot steel faceplate to his face, making him even more scarred than before. Now, Ashley, Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a question here. Okay. Normally, in most Doom's origins, it is said that his face is horrifically scarred by the accident that he blows up in the university that Reed warned Mm -hmm. about. But John Byrne, legendary Fantastic Four writer and artist, said during his Fantastic Four run that he showed that Doom's face only had a minor scar Mm -hmm. from the Empire State uh, accident, and he believed himself to be super ugly. Now... It is this incident of the monks giving him the faceplate that was still too hot that Mm -hmm. he just put to complete the armor that is said to make his face look like pizza. However, Jack Kirby, the character's co-creator, believed that the audience should never, ever, ever see Doom's face. So, I have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Where do you come down on the Doom argument? Should his face be scarred from the Empire State accident? From the monks, should we never see Doom's face? Where do you come down on this? I kind of like the idea that we never see it. But he just refers that it's horribly scarred. Yeah, there. it's kind of like when you see the Phantom of the Opera's face. Because whatever you're imagining is so much worse what it actually than is. whatever it is. Um, the Flash does that with, with uh, Bavatar. Where like we hear that it's, it's very all in. And That's then our we, nickname. And then him. we see him disfigured and it looks dumb. Um so I can definitely, and and this is funny because this goes to our discussion in Shazam about like who is more proprietarily important to a character who can craft more of it. Um, just to my taste, I like the idea of never seeing his human face because that also, and that puts up another barrier of like he is a bad guy. And so he doesn't even present as what we recognize as human. I think that's interesting from a narrative perspective. Mm-hmm. I think if we are going to see his face, I like the idea that he burns himself. Because to me, that shows just how arrogant Victor Von Doom is. In the John Byrne run, it was a tiny scar on his chin. You did see it. Sure. and I It was like very, very tiny. And I can understand why you would be self-conscious about Mm -hmm. that, particularly on your face. Yeah, kind of went from the corner of his mouth to the very end of his chin. Mm -hmm. Which, not that... Probably not that much geography not that to be covered. No. Uh, you could grow a nice beard and cover it up if you wanted to. But I like... Yeah, I like the idea that he... Literally could not wait to power up Mm -hmm. and wound up being punished for that. I think that punishment for an act of hubris is also very interesting, just on an archetypical level. Mm -hmm. So, cool. I guess I have two answers instead of one. That's fine. As naming himself Dr. Doom, Victor returned to Latveria and killed Baron Vladimir, the man who chased his father away, and imprisoned Mm -hmm. his son, Rodolfo, and gained control over Latveria. Rodolfo would escape and lead a rebellion and become a thorn in Doom's side for years until his death, and Rodolfo's younger brother, Zorba, would also take over (laughs) where his brother had left off. However, Doom, using his intellect and his inventions, was never threatened by these two brothers, and soon made Latveria one of the most thriving nations in Eastern Europe. In fact, it became a paradise compared to other nations, which at the time had been suffering under USSR control. Yeah, yeah. And and as a result of, we're not that really far away from World War II at that point. No. So you have a lot of countries trying to rebuild. So making Latveria this paradise or the mm-hmm. Shangri-La is a very interesting choice. And it needs to be noted that the people of Latveria love Dr. Doom. Which which comes into play in a lot of Fantastic Four stories. Mm-hmm. They love, they adore him. Mm-hmm. So... 
Many, many, many years later, Doom would confront the Fantastic Four in issue five of their very first series. Here's exactly what happened in that issue. Okay. Now, the issue starts where Doom, Dr. Doom flies his helicopter over the Baxter building. Where, uh, what's the Baxter building, Ashley? It's the giant skyscraper in New York City where the Fantastic Four lives and works. Yeah, that's agreed. Yes, agreed. That, that is right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he drops a giant net over the Baxter building, exclaiming that no one can escape it. Uh, you didn't do it in the voice. No one can escape my net. Thank you. Now the image is fully in my brain. Uh, for a genius, a net over a giant skyscraper is not very smart. But, you know, okay. <laughs> then he pulls out a megaphone and yells at them. It's Doctor Doom. Reed recognizes the voice and tells a very short version of Doom's origin. Doctor Doom then yells to send Sue Storm out to him so that she can be his hostage while the men do what he says. And he opens a section of the net for Sue to walk out of and then begins a weird sequence where they communicate back and forth using flare guns for yes answer. So basically it goes like... Like they're playing 20 questions? So Doom is saying like... You will send out the woman. And they go... Shoot your flare gun for yes. And they go, mm-hmm. shoot your flare gun twice for no. You know, like it's, it's it's ridiculous because again, for a super genius, why couldn't he build some sort of communicator? This isn't that far ahead of Star Trek. Uh-huh. So, anyways, uh, just or saying. have a phone in the helicopter, right? Yeah, he's a super genius. You could have a phone in the helicopter. We have phones this time. Doom captures them all, takes them back to Latveria in his castle. He pets his giant tiger beside his throne room and tells nice. them about his plan. He has built a time travel device, and he wants the Fantastic Four, the men, to go back into the past to obtain the treasure of Blackbeard. Oh boy. So he sends them back in time. Benjamin Grimm, the thing, dresses like a pirate with a beard and an eye patch and nobody notices that he's a giant orange monster. (laughs) They get the gems, but Reed refuses to bring them back to the present filling the treasure chest with chains. Suddenly they're brought back to the present by Doom and Doom reveals that the gems are the property of Merlin and that he will use their mystic properties. However, when Doom finds out that he's been hoodwinked, Thing begins a fight with him, smashes Dr. Doom, he falls into a million pieces and we reveal that he's a robot that's been talking to him the entire time and this is the first Doombot in all of comic book history. Ashley, do you know what a Doombot is? They're uh, robots that work for Dr. Doom that I think usually look like him. They look and sound exactly like him. Although um, there are other there are other Doombots. Yes. Yeah. Um I think this is a very interesting story because up until it was a Doombot, it's not a good story. No, no. But the the Doombot twist is like Oh, yes. more clever than I thought. So eventually Dr. Doom reveals himself that he was never there uh-huh. the entire time. And Sue escapes Dr. Doom because he forgets about her and she turns invisible and walks out of the room that he's holding her in. Typical man, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the, she frees the team. Johnny's so bad that he burns Dr. Doom's castle to the ground. I am not it's joking. That's how science works. That's their plan. Burn his castle down. Castles are made of rocks. Also, they're in a foreign country. Yeah, well, <laughs> that becomes a later theme of Fantastic Four stories of them starting international sure. incidents. <laughs> Doom leaves on a jetpack saying, Bah, burn my fortress to the ground so that none will ever learn my many secrets. And that's the first adventure of Doom. And then Jupiter Jet flies out of the sky and punches him in the head. (laughs) (laughs) Tally ho! (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) Okay, uh, thoughts? Mixed bag. (laughs) Um, Like, six out of ten. It's fine. It's not great. Mm -hmm. Um, Surprise, they brought Dr. Doom back. Mm Mm-hmm. But here we are. What do you think as the Doom expert? It's kind of goofy. Uh, The thing I want to actually talk about is that I was actually surprised. Um, I'd forgotten about I have read every issue of Fantastic Four. I'd forgotten about this issue until I recently reread it for this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten that the magic and mysticism was tied to him 
from his very first story because I thought that was a later invention. Yeah, there are some really interesting pieces here Mm -hmm. um, and and aspects of this character, but so many of the characters Nemesis created in the Silver and the Golden Age are discarded. Yes. Um, So it's interesting to me that Doom was one of the ones that stuck around and if people listen to our Black Panther episode and our Luke Cage episode, like he becomes really important in the larger scale of the Marvel Universe. Where's my money, honey? As well, yeah. Luke Cage punches him in the face. We'll share that panel again too. For like $200. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, Ashley, what do you think about, I want to ask you, so he is a metal clad villain. Mm -hmm. These stories are scientific in nature. Do you like that Doom is also a character of science and magic? He's both. He really is. And that's something that a lot of people forget about Doom because Reed's only a character of science, Mm -hmm. but Doom is a character of both. Do you like that he's of both worlds? Do you wish he was only technology or only magic? I guess it depends on whether or not you think that superpowers are magic or a representation of how we understand. Let's say for this argument, no. Um, because that's more if if you do think that superpowers are effectively magic, it's more interesting because he's a more direct foil to the Fantastic Four. I like that we have these characters for the time, which it's difficult to speak about, obviously, because this was a half a lifetime ago. Mm-hmm. Um, 1964. For the time, these were like cutting edge, forward thinking, advanced characters with uh, strong social justice points of view, things like that. And by making Doctor Doom an evil wizard dressed like a knight yeah um, or just like a robot is is interesting well let's go with knight okay sure for the sake of this all right because that's actually going to tie into something very big he's a throwback to a different type of storytelling you mm-hmm. have it's literally science fiction versus fantasy and he lives in a castle uh-huh um, but I think by letting him play with the world of science, I think it's smart because then you can do the robot comparisons mm-hmm. and you can't have him compete with Reed intellectually. But if he's open to mysticism, then maybe he can always have the upper hand on Reed because he's open to a more esoteric train of thought. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's cool. Cool. Well, I'm glad because we're going to talk a lot, of, lot, 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 lot more about the mysticism. But before we move on, we have to make sure the Mind University students have snacks in the lounge by thinking one of our sponsors. It's Care Of. What is Care Of? Well, Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. Uh, since the winter blues are finally over to an end, it's time to get back into the routine that empowers you and your choices. And all, what you do is you go to Care Of's fun online quiz. It asks you about your diet, your health goals, your lifestyle choices, what you watch on TV, and it only takes about five minutes. And then suddenly they give you personal, scientifically backed vitamin and supplement recommendations. Now, Fun fact, 90% of the people fall short of the FDA-recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. And you need to find out what you're lacking with Kara's online quiz and get your vitamins easy and convenient. I did that. I got a bunch of vitamins to help me reduce my stress because I worry about Dr. Doom all night and his giant <laughs> nets and his helicopter and his megaphone. I still hear him in my dreams. Uh, so make sure to get your personalized Kara subscription box sent right to your door every month with personalized daily packs and they are great for a busy on the go lifestyle. So, to get 50% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins, go to takecareof.com. That's T A K E C A R E O F.com and enter geek history 50. 50% off your first month takecareof.com and enter the code geekhistory50. Thank you to Care Of because uh, they're making sure that we keep the carrots in the teacher's lounge. I love it. So, now back to Dr. Doom. Oh boy. Now, we're going to go through a series of tales where Doom basically tries all kinds of plans against the Fantastic Four to kill them. Okay. First, he duped Namor into teaming up with him to destroy the team. During the team up, he was shrunk to subatomic size and ended up in the world of subatomica, where he quickly <laughs> took control of the world using his scientific knowledge and began plaguing the Fantastic Four with shrink rays. Great. Uh, he was, though, defeated by the Fantastic Four with the aid of Ant-Man. Oh, good. Once again, Doom traveled to America to take his revenge on the Fantastic Four, who at the time had incidentally lost their powers. And despite the Fantastic Four having no powers, Doom was again defeated, this time with the aid of Daredevil. And I talked about that in our Daredevil Geek History Lesson episode. You should go talk about that. Uh, Soon, though, came 
one of the greatest characters ever created in all of comic books, the Silver Surfer. Ashley, who is he? He's a silver alien whose name I used to know. Who fl- something Nar? Noan Rad. There you go, Noan Rad. My Rad. name is Noan Rad, Ashley. Um, he is the harbinger of Galactus. I am the harbinger. He's a uh, Galactus's. Peace. I don't know, Aaron boy. Hey, that hurts. I talk like this because I'm emotionless. I am the Silver Surfer. Uh huh. Silver Surfer also highly recommended. I like to surf topic. the waves of space. Also, he. Why do I have a surfboard, Ashley? Well, I was actually going to talk about that. He's such a direct um, yes. answer to California surf culture, which would have been very popular around this time. Tubular. Uh, except they made him, because of Kirby, a little too weird and a little too spacey to be a beach boy. I am very spacey. Mm-hmm. But I do love the good vibrations. Do you also love Doctor Who per your Dance Lot series? I do. <laughs> My board is called... Do you know what my board is called? No. Is it sentient? No. It is. It is alive. <laughs> no. My board is called To Me. Because a lot of times in the classic Jack Kirby... I said Stanley to Comics, me. I would say To Me, my board. And my companion, I mean friend, <laughs> said To Me is the name of my board. You know... Are um, you bored by me yet? I am emotionless. You know, Did Norin, I, say that I'm emotionless? I would really yes. love it if we could get Victor in here for you guys to have a conversation. <laughs> There, he's waiting out in the lobby. This has been a great job interview, but I think I might hire both of you. Oh, dear God. Um, I would love to meet you, Victor. Open the door. Okay. Hey, Victor, can you come in here really quick? Bah, doom shall do nothing. So, <laughs> Victor, since you're going to stay outside and do nothing, bah. <laughs> you gave a really great interview for this temp position, but Norin brings a kind of calm that you don't have. How do you feel about working together? Doom needs no one. Well. Doom <laughs> shall operate the three-hole punch better <laughs> than any man you have ever met. Norrin, are you a man? I am an androgynous being of space and time. Are you really? Do you lack sexuality entirely? No, I was married and had a children. Had a children? <laughs> I do not know your earth terms. Are you male or female? Am, or are you and by? I am male. Okay. But I do not... Like to gender myself once I imbued the power cosmic. I see. Now, Norman, I'm going to be honest. I'm leaning towards hiring you for this temp position here at the Mind University. One second. I can feel your aura. It feels stressful. That's probably true. You should calm yourself. Come to me. Let's ride the waves of space. Leave this earth behind. This is how Geek History Lesson ends in episode 250. (laughs) All of time and space Uranus to Alpha Satari they can all feel the touch of Surfer where are you touching them? Hmm? where are you touching them? your earth them? language is strange to me I do not understand its intricacies I can't even pronounce your words I see that yes hey Victor <laughs> yeah you're fired <laughs> Doom does not need your temp job. Take your net. Take your helicopter. You shall go get a job at Comic Pop. You shall can handle feel it, right? the wrath of Doom. Doom shall knock over your water cooler for this <laughs> insolence. You can request a Silver Surfer episode with the return of your Jason's Nord Rad at geekhistorylesson.com. My doom became more aggressive. <laughs> he did. He got real. Well, he got, you, you inserted some of the Kirby Lee boz, I'm and get, I feel like that really carried your character Maybe forward. that's the way doom's going to go. Yeah, I think that's the, the way the voice is going to go now. Uh, I did not intend a Noran Rad to make an appearance into this episode. Um, I really liked your Noran Rad, also because podcasting famously a visual medium, uh, your whole face got real zen as you. <laughs> <laughs> did that voice and you you are doing some other characterizations for Doom so this is a real treat for me and no one else alright all right. Uh, <laughs> tell, it, me, tell me more about Doom well I you know I will say this I, I, I went very zen with Silver Surfer because I think that's the way he is I think he's very emotionless and he's alien and you know and he is kind of like the doctor a little bit well and a lack of emotion is a, a really great shorthand for being alien, mm-hmm. you know, we so, got Spock from the same same idea. The reason I bring up the Silver Surfer is because, of course, Galactus came to Earth, mm-hmm. and the Silver Surfer helped the Fantastic Four. And because of this, Galactus punished the Fantastic Four and locked him inside Earth's atmosphere. He could not leave Earth's atmosphere, uh-huh. which is what began the first Silver Surfer solo series. 
Doom was able to steal the Silver Surfer's power cosmic and became one of the most powerful beings on Earth. But again, his plan was stopped by the Fantastic Four when they managed to trick him into flying outside of Earth's boundaries, therefore meaning that the Galactus placed boundaries to stop the Silver Surfer leaving, stole Doom's power, and gave it back to Silver Surfer. Oh, nice. But then, Doom started finding other heroes in the Marvel Universe. Doctor Doom and Iron Man travel back in time to Camelot, where... Tony Stark thwarted Dr. Doom's attempt to solicit the advice of Morgan Le Fay, mm-hmm. and Doom swore deadly vengeance for that interference, but he had to delay that interference, or excuse me, that vengeance, in the interest of working with Tony to return back to present day. Yes. And then came the first Secret Wars. Ashley, what is that event? So, there were a bunch of toys Marvel had to convince people to buy these toys. Yes. So the Beyonder kidnapped a very strange array of Marvel heroes and villains. Basically all of them. Uh, stuck them on a world. Battle world. Made them. Yeah, I wanted to say war world. I knew that was wrong. That's in DC. Uh, yep. <laughs> made them fight. Uh, Wasp kissed Magneto. Everyone came out okay. Yes. Oh, Spider-Man got that cool black suit. And Ashley is correct on that. Basically, the whole event is the powerful and mysterious Beyonder kidnapped several heroes and villains to sell toys. Uh, but he, he kidnapped several heroes and villains from the Earth to have them fight with the promise of giving the winners their heart's desire. Doom quickly became the leader of the villains. Mm-hmm. And after their defeat... Escaping his holding cell, he constructed a device out of the other Marvel villain, the Claw, to drain the power of Galactus, Mm -hmm. who was also there. Using his stolen power, Doom was able to attack his true target, the Beyonder. Doom lost the battle, but as the Beyonder came closer to dissect and study Doom and like, oh, why did this guy attack me? He managed to activate a device in his chest plate that drained the Beyonder and allowed Doom to become uber powerful with the Beyonder's powers. Too powerful, the so fact, that Doom was consumed by this power lest he destroy the universe and suddenly he was going to just destroy everything in existence. The Beyonder was able to survive this attack. He took possession of Claw's body and used Claw's guile to trick Doom into losing control of his stolen power, reclaiming it, and then defeating him. And then the Beyonder vanished with Doom and Claw in tow. Also, if you want to hear more about Secret Wars, we did a whole review of it a hundred thousand years ago. We did. We <laughs> did. Eventually, Doom got back to Earth, and his face was temporarily healed when he had those cosmic powers, but then it went back to Pizza Face. <laughs> and eventually, Doom got back to the mission that he was essentially about when he first started becoming Doctor Doom, and that is... Fr- Marrying Sue Storm. <laughs> nope. Uh, that is freeing his mother's soul. Mm-hmm. Actually, the whole Sue Storm love thing between Doom and Sue is more of a modern invention than a past it's invention. A we- I have a weird feeling about it. Because they kind of... Uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby sort of made the Sue love thing a Namor exclusive yes. thing. It wasn't until... I'd say post John Byrne that mm-hmm. that started popping up everywhere. Interesting. So, sorry to derail your no, lesson okay. entirely. <laughs> so, Doctor Strange won this contest. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Oh, yes. Doctor Strange. Is he show up. <laughs> well, you gotta hold on a second. Um, <laughs> Doctor Strange won a contest that was held by the aged Genghis. Yes, Doctor <laughs> Strange, the winner here of the aged Genghis. Oh, yes. I have spent many years, and now I have five gold stars! <laughs> Podcasting famously a visual medium. I'm taking a drink <laughs> of my winner's drink. What is what is your winner's drink? It is uh, a can of Minute Maid lemonade that is only made for winners. Bring, 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 bring. Bring, 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 bring. I'm calling Claire. <laughs> bring, 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 bring. Hi, Stevie. Claire. How did your contesty thingy go? I won. Claire. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Yes, I am enjoying the winner's can of Minute Maid lemonade, not a sponsor. So, do you win like the ability to be the host of Marvel All Access or something like that? What is this contest for? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I have no earthly idea if you're referring to some weird YouTube show. <laughs> I don't know. What is YouTube? I mean, this is the dark dimension, so YouTube has been king here for a Clear. long time. Clear. Uh-huh. I must tell you that there was at one point mm-hmm. when I was so worried. About the dark magic uh-huh. taking me over, but I, t- I kept in mind the five gold stars. I kept in mind the winner's can of Minute Maid lemonade, and I won. 
However, I did not win everything I wanted to win, Claire. What else did you want to win, Stevie? Bear! Doctor Doom has taken over this phone call. Who the hell? This guy. I have to take this guy to hell. Basically, that's what I want. You can I just want. send him to me and dad and we can take care of it. No, not, this is the not, dark dimension. not the dark dimension. That's a different place from hell. I have to bring old Victor here to hell. Hey, Vicky! Doom shall not respond. Hi, Doomy! Do you know Doomy? Your name's Rhyme. Doom shall not speak to a lesser being. Steve, your friends are rude. Uh, he's kind of a buzzkill, I think. <laughs> I, uh, he, I mean, he has a lovely cape, but I do not like his attitude. I have to take him to hell. I won't clear. I'm not going to be home for dinner because Stevie, I was going to throw you a party because you won your contest. I know. I have to take him straight to hell. That I won this contest, and the the scheme of this contest is that I have to. I'm obligated to answer the request of the runner up, and Doom was the runner up. Stevie, that's first of all, Behold. that's ridiculous. No, put Stevie back Behold. on. Do me, 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 do me. Is second place. Do me. Put Stevie Rini back on. Do me. Uh, all right, here he is. Okay, Stevie. Yes. I won't be mad. All right. As long. Yes. As you leave, do me in hell. I'll try, but I can't promise. I mean, I'm obligated to, you know, do the contest and. You know, I I don't know. I've been delaying him because I want to finish my can of Minute Maid lemonade. Mm. Luckily, he understands that one. I don't know why. Maybe he also... Do you know what he got to drink for second place? No. They gave him a gallon of Hawaiian punch. Ugh. Right. He's going to have no teeth I'm left by the end I'm glad I won first place. Me too, baby. Okay. Well, I'm, I have to go to hell. Um, I have no idea how long it's going to take. But I'm going there. Okay, send me a postcard. All right. Who do you want? To, what What do you want uh, the postcard of? The, what the hell? The mound of the, the desecrated hell, the corpses. The, the, the Ooh, and you have to take a selfie. Spawn Tower? Do you want you Spawn have to, Tower? You have to take a selfie with Al. He's a friend. With Al? Al Simmons. Oh, yes. He's he lives in, there. He's in Spawn Tower. Yeah. You yeah. got to have a selfie with him. He's okay. great. I, I can do that. I can do that. What about... um? What about Cassidy from Preacher? He's there too, right? Oh, yeah. He's like that real sexy vampire type. Yes, so, he's, um, I'm certain he's done that. He might help you get rid of Doomy if you don't want to have to bring him back with you. Bah, Doom is not a hanger on. Doomy! Are you afraid of vampires? I am a vampire. I Vlad a, the Impaler. I thought you were a robot. Vlad the Impaler is a father. Doomy, put one of your robots on. Bah, I am a robot. Are you friends with Herbie? Herbie is of inferior technology. I've never met Herbie, but he's super cute, and Stevie and I really want to meet a Herbie. So oh could you hook God. us up? No. I mean, we're Doom influencers. Doombot does not influence influencers. All right, Doomy body, please put <laughs> Stevie back on. He's just a buzzkill, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. I'm very tired of him already, <laughs> and I have to spend possibly eternity with him, because, you know, time no, doesn't matter in hell. Steve Time Rami, doesn't matter in hell. You know we're getting married. We've been working on this for, I think, three years now. <laughs> it's been a very long engagement. <laughs> we're holding out for episode 300 for the Clea, wedding of Clea. I, I, I kind of think everyone's tired of this joke. I think we should probably hang up the phone. Yeah, yeah. So I was, was going to say- you It kind of go- went nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, do you want to call Tex and I no, can put I her don't. on with I them? really don't want to call five of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I have to go. Okay, have... take the robot, leave Doomy, it's going to be great. I have to take the robot and Doom. It's kind of, they're both coming. God. I'm going to take another sip of this Minute Maid <laughs> lemonade. Mm. Okay, do you want to say bye to Daddy before I let you go? God, no. Okay, All right. love take... you. <laughs> uh, we want to apologize to the <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I did not intend Doctor Strange to come into this episode For either. Five minutes. Oh dear God! Uh, Look, you called the, Clea. You open. The door. That's right. The doom. The doom uh, voice is quietly changing. It's changing as the course of this episode goes. <laughs> yeah. If anyone wants to see the wedding of Stevie and uh, oh, Clea, dear God, uh, maybe we'll do it for Christmas. Stick around for the holiday episode. Yeah. Please uh, recommend it. <laughs> so Strange won the contest. Sure. And if you win the contest, you're obliged to answer the request of the runner up. That's not a good contest. Nope. nope. That's a BS contest. So Doom's request was Take me to hell. Take me to hell. I'm gonna free my mother. Help me free my mother. He's like, have you seen Drag Me to Hell? We're doing that. Mm-hmm. So to free his mother, 
It required Doom to incur her undying hatred, and he did that first by volunteering Strange to take his place to Mephisto. And Cynthia Von Doom was so disgusted at her son that she became too pure to remain in hell and departed for heaven. That's actually kind of nice. Mm-hmm. The story is written by Roger Stern, by the way. Luminary oh, Lester. classic, yeah. Doctor Strange wondered if Doom had been aware of this outcome the entire time or if he'd actually tried to betray Strange mm. in hell. But Doom simply mused that his mother's hatred was a price that he was willing to pray for her, uh, pay for her freedom from hell. Mm-hmm. And then came Onslaught. What's that, Ashley? That's where Charles Xavier is a giant metal guy and Jason really likes it yep so when Franklin Richards who's that that is Sue and Reed's son and he's the most powerful person in the universe one of the most powerful yes Uh, he was kidnapped by Onslaught which was the sort of mix and amalgamation of the hatred of Magneto in Charles Xavier's mind Doom saw this as an opportunity to steal the powers of Onslaught but he joined the Fantastic Four the Avengers and the X-Men to battle Onslaught in Central Park an enraged Hulk was able to crack open Onslaught's shell however Onslaught remained as pure psionic energy Thor plunged into Onslaught trying to contain him and the Fantastic Four the majority of the Avengers the Hulkless Banner and even Hulk who was grabbed by Iron Man followed inside and thanks to their sacrifice the X-Men was finally able to destroy Onslaught because he had become physical again Mm -hmm. Do the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and Banner were believed dead, but instead they were saved by Franklin. He put him in a little pocket who dimension. Who created a pocket dimension called Counter-Earth to help keep them safe. And after several months away, the missing heroes returned from Counter-Earth in a massive ship breaching the dimensional barriers. Now, this is the explanation in story for the Heroes Reborn storyline. That we talked about in Jason's meet Exactly. Cute. Now, Doom attempted to take over the ship in mid-flight, leading to a battle with Thor, which left both men adrift in dimensional space for a time. Doom's travels because of this took him back to Counter-Earth and he took over the world because he's the only hero left <laughs> and moved it from the pocket universe to his original universe with magic and technology putting it in the same orbit as Earth only on the opposite side of the universe creating a Counter-Earth. Eventually he was overthrown, the planet was disappeared and he was thrown back to his proper Earth and Doom wasn't seen for a bit, almost 40 issues in comic book time. Holy smokes, that's a long time. So, Ashley, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Doom is a, a major, major villain at this point. This is like 97, 98. I mean, forget about just a Fantastic Four villain. Like, mm-hmm. he is a pillar of the Marvel Universe. Yes. And he basically was not in comic books for two years. You know what? DC could take some notes and do that to the Joker. Well, that's what I was going <laughs> to add. Gonna, let's talk about good or bad. Um, I think ultimately good. Mm-hmm. Um, You would know better than I. You've read more Fantastic Four than I. Well, I'll tell you this. Okay, so... After Heroes Reborn, Uh Fantastic Four was relaunched with a third volume. Mm -hmm. Doom doesn't show up until I think like issue 45 or 44 of that volume. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do think, particularly when villains get too overwrought, too broad, um, and they, they keep having to up themselves in these really wild and despicable ways. I do think it's good for them to have a little sabbatical, mm-hmm. to go into the toy box, have a little sleep, and then come back later. Because there's a reason that that character is resonant, is interesting. There's a reason we're doing Doom for our 250th episode celebration. Um, I think ultimately it turned out to be a good thing. The character was brought back. He's in current comics continuity. Clearly no one got hurt by it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think there are some other characters who could probably enjoy that same treatment. Do you agree or disagree? I agree. I think more comic book villains, especially major comic book villains, should be treated like this. They should go away because when they come back, they impact. Because yeah. when Doom comes back, it is big. But the sad thing is is that now that he comes back, he basically doesn't leave the Marvel Universe for the next 15 years. Well, yeah. yeah. So... Welcome to Contemporary Comics. You're going to like the story that he comes back in. Okay. Susan Richards, the amazing Invisible Woman, the greatest character in the Marvel Universe, and Cordy to me, she experiences problems during her second pregnancy. Oh, I love this story. <laughs> because Reed is away. Yeah. Johnny contacts the only person on Earth that is as smart, smart as, as Reed, Reed Richards for help, Dr. Doom. And he correctly guesses that Doom will be unable to pass up a chance to save Sue where Reed has not That's been failed, able to figure yeah. it out. So Doom agrees, and he not only saves Sue's daughter, 
but also cures Johnny of a recent problem with his powers where Johnny was unable to flame off without technological support because he had been overcharged with energy from the uh-huh. negative zone. He actually channeled Johnny's excess energy into Sue to keep her alive during the pregnancy. After the birth of Reed Richards and Susan Storm's daughter, Doom's only condition for his aid was to be allowed to name the baby, calling her Valeria after his long lost love. Now, here's why he named her Valeria. During his youth, Victor fell in love with a woman named Valeria, and she eventually declined his advances over the the years. Doom, after the Valeria's birth, made a pact with a couple of demons named the Hazarath Three, which involved sacrificing his original of Valeria in order to gain more power. This grants Doom magical powers on a level that he would have been impossible to have gained on his own if he had spent several hundred years studying sorcery. Mm -hmm. So, he formed Valeria's skin into his new armor, Mm -hmm. and this is Doom's first new costume or whatever. With this new power, Doom attacks the Fantastic Four. He traps Franklin in hell, immobilizes Doctor Strange, then neutralizes the FF powers, and does this all by using Valeria kind of like, what are those creatures that hover around magical creatures uh, like Tikal to... Familiars. Valeria is Doom's familiar. Mm-hmm. He can see through her eyes. He can control her. He can make her do whatever she wants. Yeah. Because the act of naming her bonded Valeria to Doom forever. That's a very, that is a classic. That was folklore for a long mm-hmm. time. That is a very classic mystical trope. The power of it. It's like knowing a dragon's mm-hmm. name. So he tortures the other three members of the Fantastic Four while taunting Reed that, hey, I'm going to leave you in this magical library. And the solution to beat me is in here. You just have to figure it out because the only way you're going to beat me is by using magic. And Reed don't have super speed, mm-hmm. so he can't read like Bart Allen. Exactly. And he compares it to giving a dog a road map and concludes that it will be impossible for Reed to master sufficient magic skill on a threat to be a threat to him. However, Reed is able to read and find the correct mm-hmm. spells. And because of this, he's able to release Doctor Strange astral form from Doom's traps, allowing Strange to give Reed a sufficient crash course in magic for Reed to be able to free the rest of the team. He does this by building a machine that sort of focuses magic mm-hmm. by Reed using a spell where Reed insults himself. Huh. So Reed is able to beat Doom by going, I'm stupid, mm-hmm. I'm a failure, I'm a bad father, and uses and propels the magic out. Uh, this allows them to trick Doom into angering his demonic benefactors, the Hazarath Three, mm-hmm. prompting the demons to pull Doom into hell, which, if you know Victor's story, would be one of the worst places mm-hmm. he would ever want to go. Now, actually, this is one of the best Doctor Doom stories ever. Why? Because it's written by Mark Wade and drawn by Mark Waringo during their Fantastic Four run. And it also begins my biggest frustration with Doctor Doom. Oh, interesting. I think, hot take, that Doctor Doom's costume, oh yeah, green cloak, big belt buckle, and a skirt sucks. I hate it. Yes, you do. Now, this story redesigned his costume. Mike Ringo gave him a different costume. Yeah, it's not as good as I thought. It's, but I liked a little bit of change. Um, what do you think, Ashley? What do you think of Doctor Doom's costume? He still has the same costume that he's had since 1964. I, it doesn't bother me. Big belt buckle and a skirt. It doesn't bother me. Uh, it makes him look vaguely Eastern European royalty, which is, is sort of exactly what he is. I think there's a better design out there, but it doesn't bother me that he's walking around in a tunic with no pants on. <laughs> yeah. not, you know, not especially. Um, he, he's, a, he's a knight in shining armor. He's like a knight with his, you know, cl- uh, it should be his coat of arms, but I guess he doesn't have one um, over it. So I don't, I don't mind it. Particularly, I think it should That's be. Re- I think it should be redesigned. I like. I like the idea of make him look like a knight. Give him pants. Yeah, uh, something. He needs something like the giant bell buckle. Ugh, get out. Get out. I'm. Here. I'm honestly surprised that he hasn't had a redesign that is stuck in a meaningful way. Because you know, God knows, Batman has. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when Mjolnir. The hammer of Thor fell to Earth after all the death of the Asgardians. Mm-hmm. It passed through time and space, momentarily breaching the gateway to hell and providing Doom with an escape route when he grabbed hold of it because he recognized him. it. Upon his return to Earth, Doom regained control of Latveria, using its military to locate Mjolnir and attempted to seize its power for himself, believing the hammer had chosen him to be the wielder by freeing him from hell. But soon he discovered he couldn't lift it. 
Okay. After his initial capture and release for various war crimes, Doom revealed that he had actually been taught everything he'd ever knew about ro- ruling a country and magic by a master who would soon be returning to Earth. His master, he said, was far more powerful and evil than himself. And then his master returned. He was known as the Marquis of Death. And he was displeased with what Doom had been doing in the two decades since they parted. He expected Dr. Doom to be a vicious ruler of Earth and not just the ruler of a small country that was constantly defeated by heroes such as the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. After mentally torturing and toying with him, uh, this Marquis of Death beat Doom and banished him to prehistoric times to die. The Marquis revealed his new apprentice. And with the new apprentice, the Marquis of Death began to torment the Fantastic Four as punishment. The Fantastic Four were able to defeat Doom's master, only to find out, with the help of the new apprentice of the Marquis of Death, that this new apprentice was Dr. Doom himself. (laughs) Apparently, after being banished to the past, he spent millions of years growing in power and studying sorcery, planning to plan a deceptive move against his master. Now weakened by his defeat at the hands of the Fantastic Four, Doom killed the Marquis of Death, who was finally pleased by everything that his student has accomplished. When he was a very fa- Sith sort of dynamic. Mm-hmm. Now, when he was faced with Mister Fantastic, he's the most powerful Doctor Doom he's ever been. Doom actually declared that all the rivals between him and Richards had long been settled to his satisfaction over thousands of years. Interesting. That, that it was no longer an issue to him. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That was the Brian Hitch and Mark Millar regular FF uh-huh. run. So, uh, very quickly, there is a war with Wakanda in a storyline called Doom War, where Doom found that his brain power had been reduced and his intelligence was not, he was not as super smart and scientist y as he thought he had been. That's the storyline where all of Vibranium in the world is negated. Yep. It eventually comes back. Yeah. Soon, alert. <laughs> a future version of Franklin Richards had warned a young Valeria Richards that there was an upcoming problem with the multiverse and that all hope lies in doom. The Fantastic Four had disbanded at this time after the seeming death of the Human Torch, so it was of essence to bring doom into the fold. Valeria traveled to Lotberia and asked for Doom's help, and then she soon noticed that he was struggling to follow her words, and she figured out that he was brain damaged. In exchange for his help to save her father, she offered to find a way to restore his intelligence. And with the help of Mr. Fantastic, they used Kristoff, Doom's adopted son, Mm -hmm. as a backup to restore Doom's intelligence. As part of this bargain, Dr. Doom joined the Future Foundation to assist Valeria in saving the world. This is the storyline where Doom wore an all-white cloak, and eventually he left the FF after a giant multiversal fight with thousands and thousands of Reed Richards. Now, uh, actually, I know you like the Future Foundation a lot. This I is, do. This is the Jonathan Hickman storyline. Mm-hmm. Why do you like the Future Foundation? Also, is Doom a good part of it? I like the Future Foundation probably because it provides me with the same type of dynamic as the X-Men or the Teen Titans. It is basically really crazy science school for really crazy science characters. Uh, I also like the Moloids because they're super duper weird and super gross, but... They're really interesting, palatable characters here. I think the addition of Doom is really interesting because the Future Foundation really turns around Franklin and Valeria. Mm -hmm. And her relationship with Doom is something that's really fascinating. Like, there are even panels where she's holding his hand and they're getting ice cream. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, she looks at Doom as her her uncle. Yes. um, She calls him Uncle Doom, Mm -hmm. uh, which is weird, but also perfect per her parents' relationship with him. Um, I think he's a good addition. I'm glad he was not a mainstay cast member of the entire series. Mm -hmm. But I think this storyline is really cool. Yes. After his return, Latveria soon became the site of an incursion, which is a collision between the Earth and one of its alternate universe counterparts, by a group of beings named the Map Makers. Over the following months, Victor worked with a team of scientists to reverse engineer one of the pieces that a Map Maker that he had gathered from the incursion site that took place in Latveria. The Mad Thinker, another Fantastic Four villain, successfully managed to map the entire Map Makers network the multiverse, essentially, and Doom planned to use the villain Molecule Man, whose energy frequency matched with a multiversal beacon, to oppose what the hell these incursions were and the thing that he discovered, that there was the decay of the multiverse, that the multiverse was going to die. Mm. 
The Molecule Man took Doom elsewhere into a blank void from where they subsequently traveled backwards through the mists of time and the various planes of reality. They traveled 25 years into the past, and they saw an alternate reality where they got to witness the origin of Molecule Man. Basically, the Molecule Man is a unique being in the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. He is a singularity. He is a bomb created by the Beyonders because hey. there's not just one Beyonder. They God are a race. God forbid. Mm -hmm. And they all wear disco suits and they love it. So the Beyonders were going to use Molecule Man to detonate in every single universe across the multiverse at once, killing the multiverse. If a Molecule Man dies, his universe dies with him. And if every Molecule Man died at the same time, every universe dies simultaneously. And this is the Beyonder's eventual goal with the end of the universe, whenever they decided their experiment was done. Mm -hmm. The Molecule Man of the 616 universe convinced Doom that in order to thwart the plans of the Beyonders, he had to embark on a mission across the multiverse to kill Molecule Mans on his own terms. Because even if Doom's actions resulted in a similar result to the Beyonder's plan, the destruction of various mm -hmm. realities, Doom's course of action attempted to save all that he could from destruction, as sending out the Molecule Man earlier would actually diminish the full charge of the explosions when the Beyonders eventually set it off. So it might not kill the entire multiverse. Mm -hmm. It only might kill like part of it. Yeah. So eight years after beginning his journey across <laughs> the multiverse, when Doom had killed thousands of Molecule Man. Now, remember, this is also a Doom who just spent thousands of years working uh, the long way around. He old. He's very, very old at this point. Is he older than the Silver Surfer? The Silver Surfer is eternal. <laughs> and everlasting, Ashley. Okay, I just would you to like know. to come to the asteroid belts of Bolinus and the peaks of Penilus? True. Let's go. We shall go between them. Our energies flowing, exploding, if you will, until we reach our story's climax. Cool. My words are very confusing. This English does not spoke well to me. <laughs> you almost got that one. <laughs> there were a lot of weird jokes in that one. Yep. <laughs> we shall not mention them. No. <laughs> the jokes aren't funny if you have to explain them, Harley. Then you teach this lesson. That's what I said. <laughs> 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 um, so basically... Doom's been killing Malcolm Man for eight years. And he's 100,000 years old at this <laughs> 100, point. 100,000 years old at this point. <laughs> uh, a cult actually formed around the religious concept of Dune. Oh, good. And they called him Rabul Alai, which oh, is you basically- you talked about that in the uh, intro. Which also means the Great Destroyer. Well, actually, in the present day, uh, a man that we know very well- Personally? Oh, yes. Doctor Strange. Oh, yes. Good friend of the show. Well, you see, I am back. Welcome back. I am back here with my good friend. I didn't know I was. I knew Doom so well. I didn't either. <laughs> well, you see, me and my friends, the Black Priests. Uh huh. Um, they're Were very... you all white guys? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. We are very similar to Black Sabbath. We like to walk out. Okay. And to kill people. That's okay. two things. But we are big with the dark magic. At this time, I was full of dark magic. I was an evil son of a bitch. Okay, but you called yourselves the Black Order? We're the Black Priests, baby. Instead of the Dark Priests. We're the Black Priests. Okay. We went to this cool happening spot called the Library of Worlds. That does sound cool. We wanted to find this Rabul Ali. Uh-huh. We'd only heard about him. And we thought that he was causing the decay of the multiverse. Uh-huh. And then we open up a door and look, there's old Doomy right there. Dr. Doom walks out. And the Prince Ali theme plays. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Dr. Doom presented himself. Uh -huh. And Doom informed Strange of his origins as Rabul Ali and revealed his ultimate plan 
to defeat the Beyonders. In a last-ditch attempt to save the multiverse, Doom took Strange and the Molecule Man to directly confront the Beyonders, and he was able to destroy them and harness all of their power using his universe's Molecule Man as a conduit. So basically, Mm -hmm. Molecule Man is the power uh, plant, and Doom is the... Well, let's say... Hot take. He does exactly what he did to save Sue with Johnny's powers Mm -hmm. to himself with Molecule Man. Molecule Man, I would say, like is the water plant, and Doom is the host. He's the cipher. Exactly. There you go. So that's cool. Doom's accomplishment actually cost the death of thousands of universe, leaving only about of it does. leaving only about twelve worlds left. But not fifty two. <laughs> no. But his goal did work. He the entire multiverse did not die. Yeah. So. Doom used this godlike power of the Beyonders to salvage the remains of several realities and build a patchwork planet named Battleworld. Hey. Which he ruled as God under an iron fist with the help of Stephen Strange, who was the sheriff of Battleworld. Should have been called Doom World. Mm-hmm. And thus started Secret Wars. Actually, the third, even though it's the second Secret Wars. Yeah. And this was by Jonathan Hickman. Well, because there's Secret Wars, there's Secret War, mm-hmm. and there's Secret Wars 2. Mm-hmm. And then that is the Secret Wars again. Yeah. Uh, now, this world's version of Sue Storm fell in love with Victor, and they had two children, Franklin and Valeria, in this world. Now, Battle World proceeded for eight years. Mm-hmm. Doom was this godlike being for eight years. And there were certain heroes that were missing that you just did not see, including a certain Reed Richards. Yes. Doom and Strange managed to twist the memories of their inhabitants to the point where they could no longer remember what had existed before Battleworld. And eventually, he was confronted in this new multiverse by Reed Richards. Now, when Reed Richards showed up, the Molecule Man partially stripped Doom of his godlike power to allow Reed to have a fair fight. And during the furious confrontation, Doom accused Richards of believing that he could have done better with Doom's power. And when Reed conceded, yeah, I totally could have done better and I could have (laughs) saved more worlds, Doom actually agreed with him. Interesting. On the grounds of that, they both agreed to stop fighting. And Molecule Man gave Doom's power to Reed destroying battle world in the process and with the power he received from the molecule man and the help of his revived family who could now remember him mr fantastic began to restore the multiverse including earth 616 and after accepting that doom was going to eternally resent him reed decided to alter victor's memories so that he would believe that he was dead and on the hopes that Victor could become a better man if he no longer pursued ultimate power and believed that his biggest rival was dead. So in addition to altering Victor's memories when he returned him to Earth-616, mm-hmm. Reed also cured him of his scars. And Victor looked yep. like he did back when he was like 25. Yeah, young sexy Dr. Doom is what everyone referred to this as. <laughs> yes. Um Now, while rethinking his life, Doom was ultimately struck with the notion that it was a selfish act of ultimate power and it wasn't his calling and maybe he could be a good guy. And thus he set out to become a force of good. This new perspective led Doom to abdicate his throne to Latveria, leave Latveria behind, and he eventually stole one of Tony Stark's Iron Man armors in an attempt to do good. And this all happened in the infamous Iron Man title uh it's also great he also helped ben Grimm search the multiverse for reed and sue Mm because ben would never give up hope that they were dead and he got a badass new costume his infamous iron man doom costume is so cool does he have pants uh he does um it is a green cloak over some white iron man armor that has short metal points like he's like it's all short metal points they're making an action figure of it very soon i am definitely going to buy it um But ultimately, this did not last. And during a battle with the villain, The Hood, Victor proves his heroism finally by saving Tony Stark from a deadly attack. And his new suit is destroyed and his face is horribly scarred again. Mm. This leaves Doom to retreat back to Latveria, where he can now be seen in the current Fantastic Four series by Dan Slott and Aaron Cooter. And that is the lesson of Doom. Holy smokes. Time is a donut. He always has a scarred face. That's right. All right. Now, before we move on, we have to make sure that the Mind University janitors have a living wage by thanking one of our sponsors. And this one is Wix. Now, guys, I love Wix because for 140 million people use Wix for their website. I'm one of them. I love it because you can start and you can publish websites for free. They have 500 stunning templates or you can start from scratch. I'm making a new website with them. 
It's great. It's very adaptable. It's very changeable. I can move stuff around. I'm not a web designer. I'm a dummy when it comes to the web. And I can use hundreds of their design features and apps that allow me to grow history lesson, allow me to grow my brand. You can use video backgrounds. You can use galleries, menus. It's so easy. So if you need a new website, you can get started now by going to Wix.com. That's W-I-X.com slash podcast to get 10% off. Wix.com slash podcast, guys. It allows you to set up databases and content-rich sites without coding. So go check them out. Tell them that we sent you because it helps the Mind University and helps our janitors have a living wage. And now... We're going to go back to recommended reading. And recommended reading is a part of the podcast where if you enjoyed anything that Professor Jason talked about or our many drop-in guests, you can go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading, get these books on Amazon, you pick them up, you get to read, Amazon kicks a little bit back our way to help us pay our janitors a living wage because we believe in that. And uh, yeah, learn about Dr. Doom. Also, our full catalog of recommended reading is up there all the way back to the beginning. All the way back, 250 episodes. The first book is Fantastic Four Books of Doom. This is written by Ed Brubaker. It collects issues one through six. This is a retelling of his origin by Ed Brubaker. It expands from the moment his mother dies all the way to where he finally wins the throne on Laveria. It's So he never meets the Fantastic Four mm-hmm. in this, but Reed Richards and Ben Grimm are in this. It's really good. It's very compelling, and it makes a lot of the sillier aspects of Doom's origin make sense. Cool. The next one is Fantastic Four by Mark Wade and Mike Waringo Ultimate Collection Book 2. Now, the reason I'm giving you Book 2 is because Book 2 is the one that has Unthinkable. Yes. That's the one where he becomes the evil magician and sends Franklin to hell and uses uh, Valeria as a familiar. It's really cool. And the last one I'm going to do is a series that should not have worked but totally worked, and that is Infamous Iron Man <laughs> Volume 1. Infamous. Six issues of Doom in the best costume he's ever had. Being a hero. It's actually really good. And Alex Maleev uh, draws it. It's really oh, good. Oh, lovely. All right, so now let's move into the teaching tweet. Yes, we're in 140 characters or less because we are old school. Professor Jason is going to sum up everything he just taught you about Doom. You can find this on our Twitter, at GHL Podcast. Bah! Dr. Doom needs no tweet to proclaim his greatness. Death to Richards! That's it. Excellent. Very concise. I mean, that's that's all you can say about yeah. Dr. Doom. Uh don't forget you can check that out at GHL Podcast on Twitter. Uh, now we're going to move into the honor roll. Yes, where if you go to Apple Podcasts and leave us five stars, we'll read whatever you write. Yes, and it helps us in the algorithm, so please do it. The first person that's going to join the honor roll is It May Be Victor. Says, this show is the perfect way to learn what you never knew you wanted to know with interesting histories told in fun ways by the freakishly charismatic hosts. I give a <laughs> shout out to the Cyclops episode as it perfectly summarizes the history of a long standing and one of my favorite characters. Well, It May Be Victor, that's one of my favorite characters too. Thank you. The next one that's going to join the honor roll is Milo Chippy. Who says, my sons and I have been listening since the Loki episode, and it's one of our favorite things to do together. After the DC Couples episode, I had to explain who Midnight and Apollo were, which was great, (laughs) but made me realize that there's little to no image, Wildstorm, Vertigo, etc. episodes, and I love to hear their take on the authority or planetary. Uh, I would love to do a planetary episode, um, but it's tough because if you do it, it's basically us just telling you the story. I'm gonna. And I don't like to do that. I'm gonna give a spoiler for something that is very changeable. I think we have one of those first volumes in our book club list for this year. Authority Volume One. I think it's. I can't remember if it's Authority or Planetary, but I think we have the first right, volume. Cool. I think. I think we're better off to do a book club of those. Yes, and they are. Those are two topics that we have bandied around, but it would have to be in the book club format because, like Jason said, they're very contained. Limited. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I want you to enjoy the stories. But thank you. Um, I'm glad that we could open up that Midnight or an Apollo conversation because it's important to have. And Loki is like our fourth episode. So thanks for sticking around. So it may be Victor and Milo Chippy. Welcome to the Geekish Lesson Teacher's Lounge uh, over at the side over there. There is an iPad for use. And on the iPad, uh, there's Candy Crush. But be careful if you beat... Uh, Mr. Smith's biggest score, he will beat the crap out of you. What does Mr. Smith teach again? Dance. (laughs) Okay. All right. So don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere you can listen to podcasts. Make sure you download those episodes. And if you want to suggest 
these lessons like Dr. Doom. Ashley, where can they do that? You can do that at geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bunch of ways to contact us in all of those places. Please be sure to tag the official Geek History Lesson accounts because otherwise your requests might get lost. Uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to everybody that suggested the episode. Dr. Doom, Owen Hobbs, Lee Jones 1221, Epic Face Master, Alexander Ebert, Dominic Tan, Roger Murphy, Christopher McKee, L Bird Zero, Nick Joseph, Bob Flores, Roman Salas, Benjamin Kesselman, Jason Jatsik, Daryl Jason Hearn, Victor Rabella, Matthew Corum, Johnny Lee, Matt Mitchell, at GU Doug, at KC Batman 034, at Kiefer underscore XJ, and at Super Gerbil. Thank you so much. <laughs> Whew, the most requested episode of GHL ever. And don't forget to go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Jawin. It supports the show, and we have other cool stuff over there with your membership, like Crisis Club, Jason and Ashley Excellent Adventures Podcast, Secret Mel levels and the ghl extra podcast if you love ghl you get an extra 10 to 15 minutes about the subject only on our patreon this week ghl extra is going to be a discussion is dr doom the greatest marvel villain interesting we're gonna settle it okay don't forget to follow us on twitter at ghl podcast at john for me at ashley v robinson for ashley uh hashtag stick around Last section of the podcast where we make sure that you guys actually listen to the whole thing to support us. It's a trick. Anyways, Ashley, um, let's go. Uh, when should the Marvel Cinematic Universe introduce Doctor Doom? Because they now can. When, when do you think it should happen? In the Fantastic Four movie, which should be the fourth movie of the fourth phase. Okay, so let's figure this out. I think phase four begins with Spider-Man Far Away From Home. And they have not announced... What's coming after that? No, we are all left to assume that we will learn about that at either, what is it, D-165? D-23. The, the Disney conflict. Con- I think it happens like uh, in about a month or so. Or so so uh, we are left to assume that the announcement will either happen there, San Diego Comic-Con, most likely. It's definitely going to be post-Endgame. They're not going to um, announce it before Endgame. No, or at New York Comic-Con. But you said this ages ago, and I think it's the most brilliant thing Whatever this presentation is going to be about Phase Four, mm. you know, like when we heard about when we heard about Phase Three, there was that Thor Ragnarok animatic that everyone lost their mind about. Mm. If they truly want to destroy people's brains, it's just the number four with a fiery circle around it. Yep, like the flare gun. Yeah, I, <laughs> like I also flare think gun. I I I kind of disagree. I I want Doctor Doom to appear. Or and be mentioned before the Fantastic. Appearing Four. and being mentioned are different things. Sure, I, I want both. Mm. I want a cameo. I almost don't think I want Doom as the first villain in a Fantastic Four movie because they've done it twice now and they've screwed it up twice. I would almost rather him be the villain of the second one. I didn't say I wanted him to be the villain of oh, the sure, first sure. movie. But he should just appear in it. Um, well, I really think they had the right idea with Fan Four Stick and then they ruined it. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to see a Fantastic Four origin where Victor is on their side mm-hmm. and see that break. Kind of like Baron Mordo in Dr. Strange. Uh huh. I would, I would like to see that arc. And then maybe we don't even see him for the second movie. I'd be down for that. He's only mentioned and then he becomes the full glorious villain in the third or the fourth installation. Sure. All right. Cool. I'm down for that. Yeah. Sweet. All right. That is it for this episode. I am Jason Dumalicious Inman. <laughs> Mash to Victoria Robinson and Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Bah! Doom needs no dismissal.